If you want your WordPress website to look more like this, and look less like this, and if you want load times to look more like this, and less like this, stay tuned because I'm going to be showing you a bunch of quick and simple WordPress speed optimization tips that you can apply to your own website. Hey, this is John, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to optimize your WordPress website in order to make it run much, much faster. So as you can see here on my GT metrics, for this website here, we have an A in both paid speed and Y slow. It's not perfect, there's still some work to do, but it is better than most websites on the internet. And the reason you want a faster website is because it is one of the factors that Google looks at whenever they decide what website they wanna rank. If websites are pretty much identical and one is much faster than the other one, the website that's gonna be faster is going to rank higher almost always. So that's why it is really important to do and it is actually quite simple. There are a bunch of other things you can do that are more complex, but in this video, I'm just gonna be showing you some of you know the simple things that pretty much anybody can do. So if you are unfamiliar with these tools here, the first is GT Metrics. And you can simply come to it gtmetrics.com and you can put in your site and it's going to give you a score this is kind of the most like com complex one it's going to give you the most information but it's going to give you a bunch of stuff related to page speed and also why slow um just some stuff that you can kind of you know figure out it's going to give you the most information you can click in one of these and it's going to show you pretty much exactly what you need to do in order to improve like if this was um, lower or not this is a b here we can come in and we can see that there is a little bit of work we can do in order to increase the speed so that's pretty much that the next is going to be the pingdom speed test so you can simply go to tools.pingdom.com you can come in plug in your url and this site here is going to be good at telling you your load time that's kind of the main feature to it but pretty much anything under one second is going to be really really good so as you can see if you do get your load time down this much then it's, it's going to help you it's going to give you that slight advantage the third is going to be Google PageSpeed Insights. So if you just simply Google PageSpeed Insights, you should come to a page like this where you can type in your URL. And this one's pretty much good for, if you come look down for server response times are low, this right here, so this is pretty much the only thing this is really good for, it's giving you your server load time. So as you can see, this one here is 210 ms. So pretty much anything in and around 200 is going to be really, really good. So that's kind of one thing you can do is come into these three tools and check your website. And if you are wondering what are the biggest factors in having a fast website, there's going to be two. So the first one is going to be hosting and the second one is going to be plugins. So I'm going to be showing you pretty much everything, but the two main ones are having a good web host and the second one is having good plugins. So let's get started and jump into the first step. The first step and actually one of the most easiest ones is actually to avoid EIG hosting. And EIG is simply a company that owns a bunch of different hosting companies, a bunch of smaller ones, and they are known for cutting costs by packing too many people onto the same server, which does stress it out and slow it down. And they do have a bunch of horrible reviews because of it. Many websites that are hosted through EIG, they have like high response times. Their websites aren't that fast and their, their customer support isn't as good at all. And that's why I would definitely consider avoiding them if you can. If you do come to Google, you can simply type in EIG hosting and there's probably going to be reviews some people are probably going to say, you know, it's good all that cuff just because they do offer good affiliate commissions. But in Facebook groups or on forums, they are they are quite hated to be honest. So if you simply come down and look for Endurance International Group on Wikipedia, you can click in here. You can scroll down and you can see a big list of all the web hosting companies that they are owned by. So I can see Bluehost right here, probably one of the most well known and HostGator as well. So Bluehost and HostGator are owned by EIG. And if you do have web hosting with them, I would definitely consider switching just because of the fact that they are crammed in the same server with all its other companies. Support's gonna be bad and their service just isn't going to be fast enough compared to the some of the other smaller web hosts that you can go with. And it is quite easy to switch if you do wanna do that. And that is probably something that I would recommend myself. 
The second step I used was switching to SiteGround, which is another web hosting company. And it's been one of the biggest reasons why my load times and speed has been increased. Because if you remember, the two things that make the biggest impact on speed is plugins and hosting, right? And SiteGround is the best, in my opinion, for probably 90 to 95% of people. So if you do click on the first link in the description, you'll come to this page here, my resources and deals page. If you simply scroll down to where it says SiteGround, click on see why SiteGround is the best host. And this is an article I made that's gonna explain things more in depth. I'm not gonna go through all of it, but as you can see, some of the reasons why I pick SiteGround, just because they do have crazy fast load times compared to other companies, WordPress actually recommends SiteGround as one of their hosts. They are number one rated in a bunch of different Facebook groups. As you can see here, there's pictures, screenshots, all this stuff. They are used by Yoast SEO, which is the biggest SEO plugin company for WordPress. They do offer free SSL, Cloudflare, and SG Optimizer, which is one of their plugins. Free migration with Grow Big Plus, and their support is much better than HostGator and Bluehost. So as you can see, SiteGround, the first reply ticket is eight minutes compared to 44 minutes as their next one. 99% uptime, all this kind of stuff, right? So you can come and read in here, but this is why I use SiteGround and why I do recommend it. So it's not just me, but as you can see, other people are recommending them as well. So you can come in here and kind of look around for yourself. So those are the main reasons why I would recommend switching to SiteGround and it actually is really simple and you will get better results because of it. So if you do come to the resources and deals page, you can click on this link here to get the current deal, which is gonna be $3.95 per month instead of $11.95 per month, as well as some bonuses I'm offering as well. So you can come and check that out if you want, but that is going to be the single biggest thing you can do to increase the speed of your WordPress website. The next thing you should do is upgrade to the latest version of PHP. And this is one of the easiest things you can do to like two to three X times your speed. And the reason, if you've never done this in the past to your site, you could potentially be running on an older version of PHP and it could be slowing down your sites. The reason that it isn't upgraded automatically sometimes is because some themes or some plugins they aren't always updated regularly. So if, you, if you're always upgrading to the new version of PHP, sometimes the theme and plugins can't run it. So that's why your, your hosting company doesn't automatically do this. But this is something you should definitely do. And if your theme or plugins can't handle it, you're probably gonna have to look for something else. So what you wanna do is you wanna come to your cPanel of your hosting company. You wanna scroll down and look for PHP version manager right here. Simply click on that. You'll come to a page that looks somewhat like this and you wanna make sure that you are not on like a PHP 5.6. This is the old version. So you wanna be at least in the sevens. So what you can do is you can like literally select any of these, but I would recommend you come in and pick one of the newer ones. Oftentimes, like the latest one, like 7.3.7, .7, that's kind of the latest one. So sometimes there can be like bugs and stuff in it. So if your host does offer it, I always select on managed PHP version and that's pretty much going to be like SiteGround will automatically update it once the new PHP version is all fixed up and secure and there's no more bugs so they will automatically update it once it's good enough to do that. But you definitely want to be in the 7s. So what I would recommend doing is if you are in like an older version, maybe like upgrade to like 7.1 and then save that and then go back to your site to make sure everything's working. If it's not working, you can always go back and then kind of figure it out. But chances are, if you have an older theme that hasn't been updated, it might not work properly with the new PHP. So just make sure that you do update the PHP to a new version, and then you get a good theme and um, some decent plugins that are always updated. And that's going to really help you out. The next thing I did was use a plugin called SG Optimizer. And this is a plugin for SiteGround users, and it's one of the other main reasons why I would recommend SiteGround. But this here is a plugin that you can use to optimize different things of your site. So if your web host is SiteGround, you should automatically have it. You can simply scroll down to where it says SG Optimizer. And this is a plugin that can do different like caching stuff, optimization, and compress images, that kind of thing. So it's like an all-in-one thing. And there are other options out there if you aren't with SiteGround, there's other image optimization and caching plugins out there. But in my experience, I, I have tested on quite a few and SG Optimizer is 
I've, I've gotten the best results of the free plugins. So this has been the best free plugin that I've tried. So I'm just gonna quickly walk you through the steps on SG Optimizer. If you aren't with SiteGround, you can go with a different caching plugin. Just come up to plugins, go to add new and look for caching and kind of look for these similar similar settings and turn them on. But if you first come into super cacher settings, dynamic caching, you wanna turn that on. You wanna come down and have automatic cache purge. You wanna put that on. And if you come down to memcache, you wanna turn that on as well. So in order to turn this one on, you're going to need either the second or third tiered plan from SiteGround. If you have that, you can come to your C panel, come down to super cacher, come down to static cache and make sure this is turned on. You'll then wanna go into dynamic cache and turn that on as well. Same with memcache. And then once you turn memcache on, you can come back and turn this on. You can then come to environment optimization and I would recommend turning on enable HTTPS, fix insecure content, enable that, scroll down and turn on gzip and also browser caching. So turn those on, come to front end optimization, come down and turn on remove query strings and disable emojis. Leave the other ones off, come into image optimization. You can turn on new image optimization. You can compress existing images that you already have on your site and then you can turn on lazy loading and turn on all of these as well and that's definitely going to help your site load a lot faster just with this plugin alone it's going to make a big big difference but if you don't have SiteGround, just get another good caching plugin and turn on these settings they're probably going to have it but again sg optimizer has given me the best results and if you are to turn on all of these settings and then put your site through GT metrics and Pingdom speed test, you're gonna see much better results. And then we can move on to the next step. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna install a plugin called Auto Optimize. And it's just another plugin you can use to optimize the site in a different way that SG Optimizer does. And you don't need to have SiteGround for this. You can literally use this with any hosting company you have. So what you wanna do is you wanna to go to your WordPress dashboard. You wanna to come to plugins and go to add new. Then you're gonna search for auto optimize. And it's gonna be this one right here. You're gonna click on install now, and then you're gonna click on activate. You're then gonna to come to settings and go to auto optimize. So you're gonna to come to the JS, CSS, and HTML setting you're gonna turn on the first two in JavaScript, so optimize JavaScript code and aggregate JS files. You're gonna turn those on. The rest can be unchecked. You're gonna to come to CSS options and you're gonna check the first three, so optimize CSS, aggregate CSS, and also aggregate inline CSS. You're gonna turn those on and then you're gonna come down to HTML options and check optimize HTML code. You're gonna to come to the bottom and click on save changes. And then your site's gonna be rocking and rolling. I've found that these two with SG Optimizer and Auto Optimize, these two have given me the best results in terms of free plugins. So I know a lot of people are gonna want free stuff. So this is what I've had the best results with. I'm testing out different things with paid stuff. So I'm gonna make a video later on about that. But just with this alone has given me an A in both page speed and Y slow on the, on the GT metrics which is gonna be pretty much all you can really ask for. This is gonna give you 90% of the way there and I would recommend you have these two plugins with these two settings. So make sure you turn these settings on and then run your site through Pingdom and also GT and see your scores and check to see how much better your site is running. The next thing you wanna do in order to increase the speed on your website is picking the right theme, right? So if you go to your WordPress dashboard, you can go to appearance and then themes, and then you can pick from all these different free themes. There's literally hundreds or even thousands of them. So it is important to pick, pick a theme that's one, it's gonna be fast, and two, it's updated regularly, because if it's not updated regularly, it's not, there's a chance it might not work with new WordPress or plugin updates. So that is really, really important. So you're gonna really wanna make sure that even if it looks really nice, you wanna make sure that it's going to be fast because if it's not fast, there really is no point in using it. So you can come down here and what you wanna do is you can come in and you know you can go with any of these, but I would suggest you click on details and preview and make sure that there is a lot of good ratings for it. If, if there is none, so if you come to this one here and there's no ratings, I would definitely advise going against that. I wouldn't recommend it. So go and make sure that you can actually find one that has good reviews. 
And then what you want to do is you want to come to it, you want to click on install, and then you want to activate it. And then you want to run the numbers through like Pingdom or Google PageSpeed test and actually double check to make sure that it is fast because I guarantee you some of these are going to be way faster than the others. So just go through a bunch of different ones that you do like and pick one that actually is fast and run it through the results and see what you get. But my favorite free theme and the one I've been using mostly if I do need a free theme is going to be Generate Press. I would definitely recommend it. It is simple if you just are blogging that kind of thing, but it can also be customized as well. Um, it's it's probably the fastest one that I've personally seen in the free themes. It's simple to use, and it can also be used with some of the bigger page builders like Elementor, Beaver, and that kind of thing. So I do have a tutorial on how to use that. I will leave a link for that down below. But just go through all the themes, install them and activate them, and actually run the numbers to see how fast they actually are for your site. The next thing you can do is do a little bit of optimization on your database and get rid of a bunch of files and posts and revisions and trash that aren't, aren't being used and it can actually be slowing down your, your, your site. So what you wanna do is you wanna to come to plugins, go to add new and search for WP Optimize. It's gonna be this one right here and you simply click on install and activate. You can then come down to WP Optimize and go to Database. You can then scroll down and you can see here, you can see Optimize Database Tables and it's going to give you all this different stuff that you can get rid of. So this here is a fairly new website and it literally has 51 post revisions stored in my database, which is taking up usage, which I don't need. So I want to get rid of this. It has 40 trash posts in your database, a bunch of other stuff, and it is a fairly new site. So if you have never done this before and you do have a pretty big site, there could be literally hundreds or thousands of different things in here that aren't doing any good that you want to delete. So you can come in here and delete anything that you don't need. So you can check whichever ones you want. You can come up and do run all unselected optimizations and then it will delete all its different stuff, which should make your site faster. So this is something I do every like two to three weeks sort of thing. And whenever I am done with this, I do like to turn off the plugin just because there is no need for it to run all the time. So what I'll do is come back to plugins, go to installed, scroll down and look for WP Optimize and simply click on deactivate. And then maybe two to three weeks from now, I will come back, I will activate it, and then I will clean up all that stuff again. The next thing we can do is for someone, if you do have a lot of YouTube videos embedded on your website. So if you remember in the past when we were doing the SG Optimizer plugin, we would lazy load images. And that can definitely help you increase your page speeds. But what you also wanna do, if, if you have videos, you wanna lazy load those as well. So if you wanna do that and you do have a lot of YouTube videos on your site, you can come to plugins and go to add new, search for WP YouTube, it's gonna be this one here, simply activate it and install. We can come down to settings, go to WP YouTube. You can follow these instructions right here to get your API key, but it's not necessary. Player side, this is going to be the size of the uh, YouTube that's on your on, on your web page. So simply, you know, this one here, 420 by 315, it's fine. It's a little bit small. If you want something slightly bigger, you can go up a side size, but you can play around with this. Um, but that's pretty much all you need to do is select, you know, one of these. I like having the player position centered, but you can simply come down and click on save changes and all of your all of your YouTube videos that are on your website will be converted and they will be turned into lazy loads. And this is something that can also really help with your page speeds loading faster. The next thing you want to do is you want to resize images that are too large. So if you run your site through GT metrics and you see that one of your problems is serve scaled images, you can simply click on this little drop down here and it's going to show you all of the images that are too big. So having an image that's too big is going to really, really slow down your site. So if this is the case, what you want to do is you want to come to your WordPress dashboard, go to plugins, go to add new, and you can use this plugin called I am sanity. You can simply install it and activate. And this is a plugin you can use to automatically resize because if you do have like hundreds of pictures on your website already, it's going to take forever to go through and resize them. If you only have a few, you can simply just do it manually. Um, this one here is pretty good. You can install and activate it. Come down to settings, go to insanity. So you can then set your things here. It's going to give you like a default. I think about it, it it's going to depend on on like the, the the width of your of your of your page that kind of thing uh, but for mine 1024 by 1024 is good you can test this you can change this to whatever you want so just give 1024 a chance 
do that. Um, image quality, WordPress default is 80, that's fine. Convert BMP to JPEG, do yes. Convert PNG to JPEG, do no. Simply save the changes, and then you can come down to where it says search images. Simply click on that. It's gonna give you a bunch of images that are already on your site that may not be the right size. You can select whatever one you want to optimize to the right size, and then simply click on resize select images, and it will automatically do it for you. And you will also wanna make sure that you, your images are compressed, which we did talk about in the past. So I use, I use SG Optimizer because I am with SiteGround. It is the best one in my opinion. It's one of the reasons why I do go with SiteGround, but there is other ones there is um, there's Smush, there is Short Pixel, there's a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. Um, this is my favorite. So just make sure that your images are actually compressed because that's going to save you a bunch of space on your website and it's going to help you increase your speed by a bunch. The next thing you want to do is you want to delete any unnecessary plugins that you may be using or delete some that are going to be high usage and kind of ones that are gonna be slowing down your website. So you wanna basically go to your plugins list and you want to deactivate anything that you don't necessarily need. There's no reason to have like 20 different plugins. Having as little as possible is going to help you it's gonna help you increase the speed of your site uh, by quite a bit. So you wanna kinda of go through it and make sure that there's nothing like you don't really need. Like if you are running the Google Sitemaps plugin, there's no need to do it because Yoast is gonna do that for you. And there's no need to have like a Facebook plugin or a Twitter plugin because you can just use a widget and put in the code there. So there is no need to have a plugin for that. Um, number two is, you want to kind of get rid of anything that does the same sort of thing. So let's say if I had auto optimize running, which is used to like optimize CSS and JS, that kind of thing. And then we also have SG optimizer, which is pretty similar. If we both have them doing the same thing, um, there's really no reason for that. But obviously, you know, what, what I did was I used auto optimizer for one thing and, and SG optimizer for another thing. So you just want to make sure that there's pretty much two plugins that aren't doing the same thing. So here's just a big list I found on plugins that take up a lot of power and you know slow down your site. So I'm not going to go through all these. You can just simply pause the screen here if you want to look through any of these. But it is important to try to avoid these ones at all costs just because they are going to slow down your site by quite a bit. So just go through all your plugins. Maybe if you do have some of these, get rid of those and just kind of test them out. Test out your, your, your page speed score with you know t disabling certain plugins, you know, trying different plugins, that kind of thing in order to get the right amount of speed. And then we can move on to the next step. The next thing you want to do is you'll want to disable comments and or gravitars just because they can take up a lot of room and slow down your site. So if you go to settings and go to discussion, I would recommend turning off comments or so just leave that unchecked. If you do want to have comments, you know, that's fine, but I would recommend you come down to where it says um, avatar display and I would recommend you turn this off so it doesn't show displays. If you do have comments on your site already and then you do uncheck this, the ones that are already there will stay there, but any new comments won't be posted. So that's that, and then you can come down and I would recommend turning this off as well, and that will increase the speed of your site if you do have a lot of comments. The next thing you wanna do is you wanna come up to dashboard and go to updates. And you're always going to want to make sure that you do have the latest version of WordPress installed. And this is also going to give you plugin updates. So if you have plugins that need to be updated or themes, always make sure that they are up to date. So, you know, you can come check this every now and then. But the most important one is WordPress. But pretty much if if you do log into your dashboard, there's going to make a big box up here that's going to say like attention, um, install the latest version of WordPress. And always make sure you do that just to stay up to date and make sure that all of your plugins are compatible. And the final thing you can do, and this is actually something that I haven't done myself yet, so I will be doing this um, pretty soon, is you wanna put Cloudflare on your website. And this is just something that can keep your website safe. It'll help you speed it up and whatnot. So it's definitely something you wanna do, and it is gonna be for free. So you, if you are with SiteGround, you can actually do this with your cPanel. Um, so I will show you that. So if you come to your cPanel, 
you look for Cloudflare, simply click on that. You can then come down to Domain Without Cloudflare. Simply click on Activate Free. It's going to put Cloudflare onto your account through SiteGround. And then once that's done, they should um, redirect you and create an account for you on Cloudflare. So once they do that, um, it'll say, you know, sites active, whatnot. You can come to Cloudflare and you can log in with the same um, username and password that they created with your SiteGround account. And then you should be able to log in and you know configure all the settings. Obviously I, I haven't done it yet, so I'm not, I can't really walk you through. But if you aren't with SiteGround or your host doesn't do that, you can just simply come to Cloudflare, sign up and go through all the steps and put it on your site. So it is super important and something you'll wanna do. And I will be creating a future video on how to do that. But it is super important that you go through all of the steps and do whichever ones increase the speed of your site not all of them are going to so just go through each one save it you know do one at a time check your check your page speed if it benefits it leave it if it doesn't then you might want to you know not do it i don't have all of those steps on all of my sites just because i don't need them um but they are proven to help you increase your speed but if you do have any questions, just simply leave a comment down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you haven't already seen our latest video on SEO, which is search engine optimization, and actually getting people to your website, click on the video card to the left and watch that right now.